On today's episode, we are going to be doing a little thrifting and then we'll go back and see if we can't spiffy those items up that we find. But first, I want to thank Cricut for sponsoring this episode and I also need a little bit of breakfast. Starbucks. <laughs> Let's get on the road. I can chill your eyes. I see we're out of time. I guess no one's to blame. Nobody crossed the line. We're here. Let's go see what we can find. I guess we couldn't see. There's some nautical decor I could have used in my recent makeover. <laughs> too bad that wasn't in vain. Maybe we got too high. But I Lots of Disney stuff at our thrift stores. the perfect project for this. So fast. Look at this score. These are all authentic Pottery Barn items in really good condition. How cool is that? We are back from our thrifting adventures and now it's time to get to work making our very easy thrift flips. All of these that I'm gonna be doing are super simple and I'm really excited to share with you the first one. Ways as we fade into gray. Which was these incredible, amazing, authentic Pottery Barn Pots. In fact, it is something that I kind of tried to emulate in one of my previous thrift flips. So it's kind of, I, I don't know, serendipitous that I actually found the genuine thing at a thrift store. They were, there were three pieces marked at $6.99 a piece. The thrift store owner marked it down to be all three items for $20. It's incredible because these items on Pottery Barn website range from $40 to almost $200. So this is just an incredible buy. The best part is, is they really didn't need anything done to them because they were in perfect condition. So what I did is on one of them, I decided to do a very large, beautiful floral arrangement. So what I did is I created a tape grid just so I wouldn't have to use floral foam and as many flowers in the end. It still took a lot of flowers because it was quite a large bowl to begin with and that was okay. For those of you who may not know, I actually was a florist back when I was in college. I worked in a couple of floral shops and so I do have experience in arranging florals and the way I kind of try to approach it is little groupings here and there. I like to imagine how it is in nature and then do some varying heights. I don't want it all to be an even mound, but some tucked in a little bit more, some poking out a little bit more, a couple of flowers here together, and it doesn't have to be all uniform. That's just the way I approach it. And a lot of people have different approaches. I decided to go with kind of a all white and green theme and I, in the end, really, really love how this ginormous arrangement turned out. It's very pretty and I love it. And in the mid-sized one, I threw in some tulips in that one and I haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna do with the little bud base. I might just set it by itself as is. But that's what's cool about thrifting is sometimes if you go frequently, you can find real high-end decor pieces and it's a lot of fun. I really hope you enjoyed that easy thrift flip. Real far. Next up is probably one of my favorite thrift flips from this episode. I'm just gonna put that out there right now because I found this binder and I had an idea of something that we could do with it and I wanted to try out a new technique that I hadn't done before on Cricut and that was debossing. I'm also gonna just let you in. It didn't go according to plan, <laughs> but I did say that this was one of my favorite thrift flips and it is, so let's go through the process. So the first thing that I did is get a piece of faux leather that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. Now Cricut does sell leather and faux leather, but what I had in my stash, it wasn't gonna be big enough for this binder that I found. And fortunately, the stuff from Dollar Tree was the right size almost exactly. 
What I was thinking is that we could take this binder and recover it into like a leather bound binder. And what was really cool about this little recipe book is it actually had some real recipes in the book handwritten. So I may give those a try because handwritten recipes to me, those are worth trying because somebody actually took the time to write it down. So I'm thinking it must be good. So I'm, I'm gonna give those a whirl, but I thought this would be a really cool piece. So what I did is I took this brown leather that they carry at the Dollar Tree and I cut it down by one inch off the top and that's all I needed to do because other than that it was the correct size for what we were doing. I'm going to use my Cricut machine. Now if you're not familiar with Cricut, they are smart cutting machines that allow you to create personalized projects with hundreds of materials. It works with software called Design Space that comes for free with your machine. This is where you you can create your project and browse from hundreds of images and fonts and once you've created your design design space will send it to your machine to cut and I made a design I went into Cricut design space and um, found this kitchen open daily sign there's lots of different things that say made with love and secret ingredient and like all of those so you can just go through their image library and find something that you like and I found this one and I thought that would look really cool and then I also oh, created a couple of options for the spine of the cookbook that said Callahan cookbook <laughs> for my last name and I just messed around I didn't know if I was gonna stack it or do it long ways but I laid it all out on what would be my leather piece and set the font in the images to deboss and then I started debossing it. <laughs> you have to use a special tip. To me, it didn't go according to plan, and I don't know if that was just because I used a faux leather, or if it, you know, if I needed actual real leather for this, or if I did something wrong. So if you have any tips on debossing, I just wasn't super thrilled with how it turned out. And I'm sure that that is like user error on my part since I hadn't done that before. So give me your tips on how to do debossing the best way in the comment section below. I have the smartest audience and you guys are such a good resource for me. But even though it didn't turn out how I planned, I was not ready to throw in the towel. So I just decided to reassess and decided to cut out the images in a gold vinyl. And I was out of the brown leather, but I did have black and I thought the black would work out just fine. So. What I did is I cut it down again to size and then I line up on my binder and trace out where the little silver grommets are on the spine. And I decided to cut those out so you could see that in the spine. And I took my crocodile and clipped those out so the little silver grommets you could see and there wasn't a weird bump. And then I sprayed on some spray glue pretty heavily, I would say pretty good. And then you wanna let it sit for about three to five minutes according to the instructions to get really tacky before you place it on. If you put it on right when it's wet, it's not sticky quite yet. So you wait three to five minutes. Then I lay out my binder and start to smooth it on and I can tell that it's gripping really good. So I'm really pleased with this at this point. And then to attach it to the inside of the binder, I just took some Gorilla Hot Glue. Gorilla Hot Glue is really strong hold and I know that it will do the trick and I just glue around those edges. I snip off the corner so that it will fold a little nicer and in the end I'm really happy with the result. It's nice and smooth and then I fold it and make sure everything is smooth and there's no puckering and if you need to put, tug on it a little bit you want it nice and tight. Then I sent my images back to the Cricut Maker and I cut them out in that gold foil vinyl and it came out easy. I was able to weed it, get it looking all great, put some transfer tape on it, and then I centered up 
the image on the front and really press that right down into it and then I did the same I ended up going with a longer Callahan there was the littler one that was kind of stacked on each other but then I ultimately went with the longer Callahan cookbook on the spine and look at this cookbook does it not look so super high-end and it started out as this kind of dated paper binder it was cute but we made it look so much better with a little Dollar Tree vinyl and some permanent vinyl and a little help from Cricut and we probably have six to seven dollars into this cookbook and it would make a really amazing gift don't you think it looks amazing I love how this turned out and I hope it sparks some ideas and don't forget to give me those debossing tips. Did I use the wrong product? Let me know. Stick with me to the very end because I've got a very special project for my husband that I'm gonna share with you. And if you're enjoying this content, I would love it if you hit the subscribe button and the like button. It lets me know that this is the kind of content you'd like. For our next really easy, the DIY thrift flip, I had this crate that I picked up on several shopping trips ago and it cost me 99 cents. It was such a good deal, but it was, you know, it'd been well loved. There was a little bit of paint overspray, I guess that it was probably in somebody's shop and it got a little paint overspray on it. So what I decided to do is kind of sand it down and distress it a little bit more to take off that paint over spray. Other than that, that's all I really did. So what we're going to do with this crate is we're going to turn it into a little toy crate for my little DIY dolly. The DIY dolly that you see wandering around here in these episodes, I thought she could use a little toy crate. So we needed to make a little sign. So I had this little wood sign that I picked up from the Dollar Tree back when it was still a dollar and I decided to paint that out in a white chalk paint. So I did really good coverage and then um, left that to dry. Now the thing about chalk paint is I, I do notice that it does end up leaving some ridges but if you do a little sanding on it, it really smooths it out into a fantastic, very smooth finish. And I really do like using chalk paint, especially in conjunction with like vinyl projects. And so that's what I did is I sanded it down and, and like scuffed up the edges since we were already having kind of a rustic crate. So with that prepared, I went into Cricut Design Space and then I took a rectangle and a circle and I kind of created a backdrop. I like to do that on almost all of my Cricut projects just so I can really envision what it will look like on my piece and so I tried to create um, my canvas if you will even though we weren't planning on cutting that out. Now we're gonna dress it up with a little bit of vinyl and what I thought about is I really thought it would be cute to put a little picture of Dolly in vinyl. Well I was looking at all of the cockapoo pictures and they didn't really look too much like Dolly and so then I found one on Etsy that was actually a cavapoo and it really did resemble Dolly like a lot and so I decided to purchase that and I'll link the one that I purchased below if you're interested and centered that up top and then I added Dolly's things in a playful font and and then I decided to cut that out on my Cricut Maker using their Smart Vinyl, which you don't need a mat for, which is so awesome. And then I just cut it out and it went super fast. It's lickety split and then I weeded it and then added transfer tape. Then I took off the backing of it and then added it to our sign. In the city light. And then I just took some of my Gorilla Hot Glue, which is really strong, and glued that onto the front of the crate. And that was it for this project. And I tossed all of Dolly's toys in it. And as you can see here, she she likes it. She approves. <laughs> and I, I think it's cute. And it's going to be really functional to put all of her little toys. She's spoiled. She has a lot of toys. <laughs> and so it's good to have one little place for them all. Even though I know she's going to drag them all over the house like she always does. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed that easy project. Back someday, baby, don't you understand?
Next up, I found this wooden box and I'm not really quite sure what it was, but my first thought was this, this would be a really good pin holder. So I don't know if it was originally supposed to be a pin holder or not. I decided to convert it into one and very easily so. So I just went into Cricut Design Studio and created a little stencil with a G on it for my husband because I thought he would really like it and needed a little pin organizer that looked a little nicer than a cup. <laughs> so I cut that out on my Cricut Maker and then all I did was weed it. And this time I decided to try to not use transfer tape just because I felt like I could do it just like a sticker because there was no like odd little bits and pieces. I probably would have just used the transfer tape after giving this a whirl. It was a little tricky. I did get it on there, but um, transfer tape would have made it a little faster and a little easier, but it did work out. And then I took some antique gold rub and buff and just very lightly rubbed that on and did two coats. And what I like about rub and buff is it's a really pretty sheen, it dries really quickly and so that's really nice and then it has a pretty good strong finish. And then I felt like it could use a little bit extra and so what I decided to do is create a little washi tape edge um, and then I took a little rub and buff to the outer rim of that to kind of tie it all together and it it literally took less than five or ten minutes like total time even drying because of the rub and buff and I think this is a, such a cute little pen holder that hope my husband will like I haven't actually showed it to him yet so he'll be getting it soon all you need to do is when you go thrifting find these little wooden pieces that are just kind of boring and customize them and they make great gift ideas so just keep your mind open for things that you can customize at the thrift store and give new life and create a wonderful gift idea. I hope you love this project. So on my shopping trips, I didn't really find a whole lot of stuff that I really wanted to make over. So I decided to add in a couple little extra Cricut projects since I already had my Cricut machine out and I, they were projects that I was wanting to do. So I hope you will be okay if I sneak these into this episode. But this is another easy thrift flip and honestly you could probably find similar items in a thrift store so you can take the kind of ideas and principles of it and use them on that. The first one is, is I got these little gold soap dispensers off of Amazon and I'll link them below if you're interested. And I really wanted a gold soap pump in my kitchen area because I have a lot of gold accents and I wanted a whole set of them. <laughs> I wanted to do hand soap, dish soap, lotions, hand sanitizer. So I went ahead and designed these ones for you. If you're interested in these images, I will link them in the description box below. Just follow the prompts on the screen and it will automatically load and you can get this these images if this is a project that you want to recreate. All you'd need to do is upload it into Cricut Design Studio and cut it out. Super, super easy. Weeded, put transfer tape on and then just and use permanent vinyl on this and just stick it on the bottles and again we're talking minutes super easy super fast and I love how these turned out it's so cute I put mine on a little wood tray that I picked up at the Target dollar spot not too long ago maybe they still have them I don't know but I love how this turned out and I hope you do too So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that a couple months ago, my husband and I went to the Dominican Republic to kind of celebrate our anniversary. We've been married 15 years, but our actual anniversary is coming up probably today, the day at this post will be our actual wedding anniversary and it's our 15th which is I believe a crystal anniversary so although we did that big trip I still wanted to do something special for him on our anniversary so I found this little galaxy crystal but to me this represents eternity and we believe that we're gonna be married forever <laughs> and so I decided to customize the base of it 
has a little base with some vinyl. So I just cut out, and I believe I used Asley font, and it says Greg and Natalie forever 7707, because that's when we were married. One of those many thousands of people who got married on that day. I first tried to etch it, <laughs> and I found out that Crystal doesn't etch very well, so I just did this in a, that same gold foil vinyl. And anyways, I just love how this turned out. I think it's very special, very sweet. And if you wanted to replicate something like this, it's not too hard. So it is very tiny. I mean, the font is very, very tiny, but if you use that gold foil font um, on a deep cut, it will, it will work out really good. And I hope he really likes it. He is, he's my guy and he's my guy forever. We are crazy about each other more so than we were on the day we got married. And anyways, I just think he's a pretty great guy and I hope he likes this gift. It's just a little memento <laughs> to celebrate 15 wonderful years. I hope this shows you just how easy it is to use a Cricut machine. I love owning a Cricut machine. It has really upped my DIY game. I use it way more than I thought. It helps me make incredible gifts that are meaningful and awesome. I get offered to endorse a lot of stuff. I turn away like pretty much 90% of it, but I really do love my Cricut machines and I really highly recommend them. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button right here. It's super easy to do. And I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family into all of my DIY Niners. I just want to remind you once again, that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.